Welcome to episode five of Pest Expert Chats, a podcast series in which PCT interviews members of Syngenta's technical services team to learn about recent pest control trends and pest control solutions from Syngenta. In this episode, I'll be speaking with Nikki Gallagher, the technical services manager, Northeast and Northwest for Syngenta. Our topic is cockroaches. Nikki will review challenges with this line of work and also discuss treatment strategies, including Syngenta's Secure Choice Cockroach Assurance Program. Nikki, thanks for joining me. Hi, Brad. Glad to be here. Well, we're excited to have you, and we look forward to getting your perspective on this topic. So, Nikki, um, you know, how have cockroach control services evolved over time in both residential and commercial accounts? Yeah, good question. I, I think, you know, it's also important to think that, um, you know, cockroach control really is and remains an essential service. You know, when we look at our top insect pests, you know, ants always take that number one spot. But, you know, cockroaches are, are still such an important, essential service. And, you know, it's not that they're just unpleasant for their aesthetic reasons, but they're also a really important health concern. You know, they can contamin- contaminate our food supplies. You know, they smell terrible. And, um, you know, their most prevalent issue is the concern around related asthma issues. Um, So the need for cockroach control really does remain the the backbone of our pest management industry. Um, But if you look at our cockroach programs today, you know, compared to, you know, uh, 1980s or, or prior, you know, there's been a big shift. And I think that's primarily been driven through the combination of our advanced knowledge of cockroaches and how our technology has advanced as well. You know, and, 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 and the technology, I mean, formulations and active ingredients. So, we, you know, our industry has made these great strides in understanding the critical components in the biology and behavior of cockroaches. Now, I think, you know, that there's still lots to learn, um, But understanding the biology of a target pest is always that first step in finding their weakness. So today, you know, we no longer rely on single chemistries that are just broadly applied in large volumes. And and today we can make insecticide applications that are much more targeted and smart. And and that's because we're taking advantage of the biology and behavior of the pest. And I think the biggest example of that excuse me, is through the use of bait technology. Right. And, and Nikki, that uh, really kind of dovetails into my next question here. You're talking about new technology and, and baits in particular. Uh, what are some of the factors that have driven the widespread acceptance of baits as the preferred method for controlling cockroaches? You know, uh, Brad, another good question. So baits are a preferred type of formulation, especially for the control of cockroaches. And I think it's, you know, we have this precise placement in areas that are away from uh, contact with human population, especially children. Um, you, we're typically looking at a reduced rate of active ingredient. And, you know, this all poses less risk for consumers and the environment compared to some other formulations. Um, so when we're using bait, you know, you know, the, the biggest advantage, though, is this high success rate and the level of control that we achieve when we incorporate bait into our program. And, and often, um, not always the case, um, but maybe a little bit more flexibility with bait that, you know, uh, preparation of a site um, might not be as critical. You know, it's, it's still important, but there can be some cases where minimal prep um, we can kind of get away with minimal prep. Mm-hmm. Um, I think baits, you know, we have a much better ease of use, um, a lot more flexibility in the account type, you know, whether we're going from commercial, residential, um, to schools, um, you know, bait can play a role in, in all of those. And with all of the, the new chemistries that we have today and the different matrices, you know, we continue to evolve. So we have, you know, uh, baits that are extremely attractive and give this high success rate of control. And and because, again, tying this back into the biology and behavior of cockroaches, you know, some of our baits um, have this added advantage where we have transfer of bait through the population. So an example of that, um, you know, when Advion cockroach bait was first brought to the market in about 2006, and that contains the active ingredient in doxicarb. That's the only documented cockroach bait to not only have 
horizontal transfer, um, which is the transfer of active ingredient from cockroach to cockroach, but we actually get tertiary transfer, so we can take it one step further. Um, I, I think in the paper that was published from uh, Purdue on that work, they showed that um, one cockroach had the potential to kill 53 other members of the population. Yeah, that's uh, really interesting findings from, from Purdue and some, some great insights there, Nikki. Um, you know, as great as these baits are, though, uh, you know, the as with anything else, you know, they have to be applied correctly. Um, what are some of the more common mistakes that you've observed that PMPs make when applying baits, both in residential and commercial accounts? Yeah, um, you know, I think sometimes it's not that the PMP is necessarily making a mistake. I think sometimes a PMP's hands can, can sort of be tied and they have restrictions from the account in what they can and cannot do. Um, so there can be, you know, a lot of challenges just based on that alone. Um, but I think it's important to always, you know, remember that no product by itself is a silver bullet. Now, I've seen our cockroach baits do some pretty amazing things and provide some spectacular control in very challenging situations. Um, but I would never promote a single product to be used by itself. Um, so, so for me, my key steps, you know, are, are communication with the customer is key, you know, getting that cooperation from them. Um, and then when using bait, you know, make sure the cockroaches like the bait. You know, are they accepting it? And if you do a little pretest and they're not excited by the first bait that you put out, you know, give them a little taster, you know, hopefully the technician can have, you know, a couple of other baits in their back pocket to work with and that they're not necessarily restricted to just one bait, that they can, you know, see, see if bait number two is more attractive. Um, and, and then I think another important uh, component there is the concern of underbaiting, um, you know, not putting enough cockroach bait out there according to the infestation level. And I think the key part that helps with that is the addition of sticky traps and using that to monitoring the population. So, you know, putting out appropriate numbers of monitors and, you know, that will help locate um, harborage points um, and help guide to place baits in the appropriate places. But then it'll give you an idea of how large the population is and then guide you to how much bait would be appropriate and then also help determine, you know, the frequency of your follow-up, follow you know, whether you should be coming back in a week, two weeks, or maybe this is an account where you can just come back once a month. Yeah. And Nikki, sort of on the, the subject of using different products, uh, what role does bait rotation play in a cockroach management programs? Yeah, again, another good question. So I'll take it back to our history at Syngenta. So Advion cockroach bait was developed in 2006 because at that time, aversion was really an issue for the entire pest management industry. So the formulation in Advion was heavily researched and evaluated over several years um, before it was even launched. So we, you know, looking at combining certain food ingredients and the combination of ingredients that could potentially trigger aversion. So this included testing on dozens of field collected strains. And uh, if you look at Advion cockroach today, it actually continues to be the number one cockroach bait in the market, which I think is a testament to the quality of the development and research behind it. However, um, you know, as part of our stewardship for new, te new technology at Syngenta and to avoid any development of resistance and maintain our market leadership, you know, we have to continue to evolve and stay ahead of the cockroaches. So not only is the development of new matrices key to avoid aversion, and that's when the cockroaches, um, you know, continue to find uh, food ingredients are not necessarily attractive anymore. They won't uh, feed on uh, baits that they are averse to. Um, but also the addition of new active ingredients is essential to prevent physiological resistance. And that's when we see decreased susceptibility to the active ingredients. 
So for a bait rotation program, you know, we have to have uh, new matrices as well as new active ingredients. And we recommend uh, rotating approximately every 90 days. And that's because we're following the life cycle of German cockroaches. So when it comes to resistance issues, we're really just talking about German cockroaches and their life cycle is 90 days. So if you rotate approximately every 90 days, you're going to avoid the buildup of any potential uh, resistant genes in that population. And Nikki, you mentioned a little bit about the, the biology and behavior of cockroaches. Maybe we can touch on that a little bit more, though. Um, you know, what do PMPs need to understand about cockroach biology and behavior to, to successfully control these pests? All of it, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think there's, there's probably too too much that we could ever cover in, in this conversation, Brad. Um, but I, I guess just to simplify, I, I, simplify, I would you know suggest that identific, identification is key, and, and that goes for any pest. You know whether we're talking about cockroaches or ants, and um, especially with the world that we live in today, um, there's always the potential for new invasive pests, and you know we have you know, new cockroaches in certain parts of the country that we're having to learn about and understand, you know, what its biology is, what its reproductive rates are, you know, um, will the gel baits that we have available today, are they just as attractive to these new cockroach species or um, is a granular bait formulation more attractive versus a, a gel formulation? Um, so I think you know, identification is key because then it leads into the next steps and taking advantage of those weakness points and, and knowing where to find them. You know, if it's a cockroach that likes, you know, more humid, moist areas, you know, we, we know to look in those particular areas. So just, just things like that, I think, are, are re really the key first steps, Brad. Sure. And, uh, Nikki, want to talk a little bit about the new Sec Secure Choice Cockroach Assurance Program. Um, can you tell us how this program works, and, and how does it sort of take the guesswork out of cockroach control? Yeah, you know, so cockroaches are, are, are so well known for being difficult to control, and uh, our S Secure Choice Cockroach Assurance Program um, combines an integrated pest management approach along with proven products for a comprehensive cockroach control program. So we developed the Secure Choice Cockroach IPM guide, and that walks you through three phases of the cockroach treatment. So you start off with the initial visit, and then you transition to follow-up visits, and, and, and then into your continued maintenance and prevention section. So this guide outlines the best practices for critical components of an IPM approach for cockroach control, you know, such as the inspection and the monitoring, and then also gets into that 90-day product rotation to help manage insecticide resistance and bait aversion. And you know, our program also features multiple active ingredients and formulations to help along that uh, resistance management program. Um, so for example, uh, it would recommend using Advion WDG insecticide, uh, which contains endoxagob, and then you could use that along with Optigard cockroach gel bait, which contains emamectin benzoate. So those are in themselves are also two different active ingredients that you can use in combination. Um, but at the 90-day point, um, if you uh, if there was still activity going on, or you're just in your maintenance phase and doing a preventative application. You could then switch to OptiGuard Flex Liquid Insecticide in combination with Advion Evolution uh, Cockroach Gel Bait. So we have this combination of non-repellent liquid insecticides that can actually be used in tandem with gel bait for more thorough control. And um, the assurance part of the Secure Choice program is that we guarantee a reduction of at least 90% of the cockroach infestation during the first four visits over a 60-day period. And if that reduction is not achieved, Syngenta will provide the needed Syngenta products for any retreatments. Great. Well, thanks, uh, Nikki, for that uh, explanation there on, on the Secure Choice uh, Cockroach Assurance Program. Um, and maybe the final question I have for you is just uh, kind of forecasting ahead a little bit. What do you see cockroach control looking like in the future, maybe 5, 10, or 15 years down the road? 
Yeah, a, a good question. Um, I don't think baits are going away anywhere any anytime soon. And I know at, at Syngenta to us, you know, we um, put a lot of resources into you know testing uh, gem and cockroach strains from across the country and, and across across the globe actually, and testing different food ingredients, you know, to make sure our matrices continue to be very attractive and, you know, to ha predict, you know, what the next best formulation is going to be and, and to make sure that we're going to have, you know, good broad spectrum control, not of just German cockroaches, um, but all of the other prevailing cockroaches that we have to control and as well as, you know, these new potential uh, invasive pests, you know, um, that we have to now worry about as well. So, yeah, new food ingredients and, and new active ingredients as well with, you know, completely new modes of action to help with that resistance management program. Well, those are some fascinating insights, and uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, how some of your uh, kind of forecasting ahead, how, how that's going to look like when in the time actually comes. So I uh, appreciate the insights, Nikki. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Great. And I want to thank all PCT's listeners for tuning in today, and have a great day.